name is Nicole, I'm a tea writer and educator and I'm here to help you learn more about tea. Today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite and one of the most versatile pieces of teaware, the Gaiwan. You'll see these used often in Gongfu style brewing. I wanted to give some tips to help make sure that you don't burn your fingers as I find that's kind of the part that a lot of people have trouble with when they first get started. For starters, what is a Gaiwan? Um, the name is very literal. Gai means lid and wan means bowl. So it literally means lidded bowl. And so this is your brewing vessel. You can drink directly from the gaiwan, but it's a little bit tricky, um, especially if you're using hotter water. So usually you'll decant your tea either directly into a cup or into a sherry pitcher. Gaiwans come in a ton of different sizes and shapes. If you're drinking by yourself, I do recommend going with a smaller gaiwan because ultimately it's going to wind up being a lot of tea, where larger gaiwans are better if you're serving a group. I personally really like gaiwans that do include a saucer. Not all of them do. It's not super necessary, but um, it's just something I personally prefer. When you're first starting out, it might be tempting to go with some that are really ornate, but I recommend really trying to stick with something as simple as possible um, and as inexpensive as possible, at least until you know that you are really going to enjoy brewing this way. The best tool that you can get is really just a plain white guy wand like this. Usually you can get these for under $20, um, which makes it a really great way to get your feet wet without having to break the bank. For this video, I'm gonna use this slightly larger guy wand. I feel like it might be a little bit easier for you to see on video. The most important tip I can give is to be patient. No one is born knowing how to brew tea this way. It's really just through practice that you're going to get better at it. And the name Gong Fu itself means brewing tea with great skill. And the only way to have great skill is to do something a lot until you get better at it. You're going to burn your fingers, you're going to spill things, you might even break some teaware. It's all part of the process, so give yourself a break. A tea tray like this is really nice to have when you're brewing this way because it catches all the water. It's not necessary though. If you're just starting out, you might want to practice on a tray, a wide plate, or even just a towel to make sure that you're not making too much of a mess. I also recommend practicing a little bit with cold water before you start actually brewing tea. That way you can get the hang of the mechanics without having to worry about burning your fingers. You'll notice that the bowl of your gaiwan will usually have a slight flare at the top. And that's kind of your guide as far as how far to fill up with water. Uh, you want to just pour the water up to just where the flare starts. Because if you keep filling all the way up to the top, you're going to burn your fingers because that part of the porcelain is going to be extremely, extremely hot. should be just enough water to meet the lid but not go over it. There are many different ways to pour a gaiwan, so I recommend playing around a bit to figure out what works best for you. I have very long fingers, so holds that may work well for me may not work as well for somebody who has shorter fingers. One of the simplest holes, especially when the top of the gaiwan is a little hot, is to pick up your gaiwan from the bottom, including the saucer, and holding the lid down with your thumb. You want to make sure that your grip is firm but even. You don't want that lid sliding anywhere, but you also don't need to have it in a vice grip. I worked at a tea house where I was required to pour the gaiwan in a certain way, so that kind of changed how I normally brew just because it became habit after a while. So what you'll do is rest your knuckle on the button of the gaiwan, and use your fingers to grip the lid, and pour like that. So you're just going to leave the saucer right on the table. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is to grab the gaiwan like this. Um, and it's really only a mistake because you're most likely to burn yourself this way. You are gripping the absolute hottest part of the gaiwan, so you really want to avoid doing that because that's going to be really, really hot and difficult for you to hold, making it more likely for you to drop and break your gaiwan. Ultimately, you want to try to grab it from the topmost part um, because that's going to be the coolest area of the gaiwan itself. When you're ready to pour your gaiwan, you want to just ever so slightly tilt the lid to make an opening. Just enough to let the water out but keep the tea leaves in. You'll have to adjust this based on the tea that you're using because some teas have larger leaves and some teas have smaller leaves. Um, so that's something that's definitely going to take some practice as well for you to get to know. The cool thing about a gaiwan is that it gives you a lot of control over how you want your tea to be brewed. The bigger the opening in your gaiwan lid, faster that tea is going to pour out. The smaller your opening, the slower the tea is going to pour out. Um, so the tea will actually continue to brew as you're pouring in that case. So you can see that pour is really slow because I have my lid on really tight. 
if I widen that opening, that's going to pour out really quickly. I am right-handed, so I know that can make it a little bit tricky for our left-handed friends. Sometimes I like to practice brewing with my left hand, just in case. It's something I have a much harder time with, but it can be done. What was something that helped you when you first started brewing with a guy Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.